Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, I'm so glad you're joining me because today we are talking about the best skincare of 2021. I've spent a lot of time in the last week or two reflecting on my favorites, best of each category in the last year. So I have a big box of skincare to go through. Many of the products here are launches that came out in 2021, but not exclusively. You're going to see products that are kind of all time favorites that continue to show up in my routines year after year. I did think about whether I should show only new launches or if I should do an all time favorites. This is sort of a mix of both. There are products here that stole the title of favorite or best of from older products as well as products that continue to shine in my routines. I did try to film me using as many of these products as possible. Obviously, I'm not gonna be using them right now, but I'm going to cut in clips so you can see the texture, the application, the way they make the skin look after application, and you can see them in a routine. For a bit of background on my skin type and my skin needs, I have combo oily skin. In the summer, I, this summer I was really oily. And in the winter time and right now, my skin is a bit more combo where I can be normal to dehydrated, but I also can get oily in the T-zone if I'm not powdering or something like that. Like by the end of the day, I do get shiny, but definitely not as shiny as I did in the summer. I also am 31 years old, so I'm thinking about developing a more rigorous um, anti-aging, well-aging routine, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I do use prescription tretinoin, which I'll discuss more in a little bit. I'm very happy with where my skin is now, and I just want to maintain my skin health so that I can continue to age gracefully. I don't break out that often, but I do occasionally get hormonal cystic spots, so I do have some products in here to manage that. And when I do break out, it always leaves me with serious pigmentation, like post-acne, PIH, PIE, all of that. So I have products in here for spot treatment, for pigmentation treatment, and for anti-aging, as well as, of course, hydrating, maintaining a healthy skin barrier, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to talk about these products generally in order of application, starting with a first cleanse. So first up, I have a longtime favorite. This is the Bioderma Micellar Water. I've spoken about this many times. You'll see it in my empties all the time. Um, so I won't go into too much detail here, but it's a very gentle micellar water, yet it's very effective on makeup, waterproof makeup. I pretty much only use this on my eyes before I go in with a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil. I just like to take that extra step when I'm wearing eye makeup to make sure that I get it off in a gentle way I soak a cotton pad in this and I kind of press it against my eye let it work into the eye makeup and gently swipe away and I find that that's a little bit more gentle on my sensitive eyes and also on my lashes than just rubbing a cleansing balm into my eyes and my lash line. So yeah, this is a longtime favorite, will continue to be. So 2021 was a year of rediscovering cleansing oil. I used to pretty much only use cleansing oil. I didn't like the fuss of using a cleansing balm. And then I got really into cleansing balms. You know, I just go in phases. And this year I tried two cleansing balms that I really, really love that have been so effective at breaking down SPF and makeup. And I pretty much always do a double cleanse if I'm wearing SPF or makeup. So first up, I have the Sahajan Ayurvedic Blend Essential Cleansing Oil. This is such a beautiful product. This is really a luxury experience in that it's a cleansing oil. It does all of the things that you hope a cleansing oil would do in that it melts down SPF and makeup beautifully. It emulsifies when water touches it. It turns milky, it rinses clean. It doesn't strip the skin, but the texture is what makes this really special. It's almost like a milky oil. In fact, the color of the product is slightly cloudy and milky. And I feel like because of that, it feels even richer than other cleansing oils do. This uses Ayurvedic ingredients and Sahajan is a new brand to me that I tried in 2021. 
Um, I was sent this in PR from Credo Beauty, so you can purchase that there. I will link, of course, everything in the description box, but I just can't speak highly enough about this product. It's kind of, I've been savoring it, and it's kind of like my treat cleansing oil. You know, you have your everyday things, and then your more like amped up routines, and this is what I save for when I want a little bit more indulgence and I spend a little bit more time working it into my skin and it's just stunning. Next up is the Make Beauty Pre-Cleanse Makeup and SPF Removing Oil Cleanser. So this is actually on the other side of the spectrum of oil cleansers. It's very lightweight and even though it's lightweight and a rather thin oil, it still breaks down makeup and SPF beautifully. It's super effective and it's also a really fast cleanse. Like, I feel like I rub this around my skin and it picks everything up and it rinses away and it, it just is so effective so quickly. So when I'm in a bit of a rush and I just wanna to get to bed at the end of the day, this is beautiful. You are going to see a lot of products from Make Beauty in my 2021 favorites. It's a brand that I came across just a few months ago um, and I was able to try most of their line and I'm so impressed. I love the products and the performance. I also think for the price point, they're very, very good. And they really get their textures and formulas right. They're also designed with sensitive skins in mind. They don't add fragrance, synthetic fragrance. They don't add essential oils. It's just a very, very well formulated brand. And in addition to that, I feel like the branding is really interesting. They do this kind of futuristic, almost like spacey kind of vibe in a way that feels very elevated, um, but the price point is still mid-range and I think very approachable. So yeah, this is the first you're going to see for Make Beauty, the pre-cleanse fluid oil cleanser. For cleansing balms, I actually only have one and it's the Youth to the People Superberry Dream Cleansing Balm. This is a very interesting cleansing balm texture. It is the stiffest cleansing balm I've used. It has the texture of like cold butter. <laughs> and I realize that maybe doesn't sound the most appealing, but I actually find that because it's a stiffer balm, once you kind of, I usually take a scoop and I like melt it in between my hands and because it's stiffer, as I'm working it into the skin and it's melting, I feel it sort of lift up the SPF, lift up the makeup. And so I don't know if this texture is going to be for everybody, but I really like it. It's super effective, of course, that's kind of the, the standard for all cleansing products and it emulsifies beautifully, rinses beautifully, but I find it to have that bit of textural experience that to me is what elevates a cleansing balm from purely functional to something that is experientially enjoyable. This does have the slight youth to the people dream scent. If you've tried like their dream mask or other products in their dream line, it has the superberry scent. I don't think it includes synthetic fragrances, but there are um, botanicals in here that lend it that fragrance. So just something to be aware of. I also like using this as a mask, like a hydrating mask. Sometimes if I'm going to shower, but I'm not gonna wash my hair, I like to put on a hydrating mask in the shower so that I can prevent um, tool or trans epidermal water loss, like dehydration basically of the skin when you're in a hot shower, which I do like to take hot showers. And so I sometimes use a cleansing balm or a wash off mask, which I'll discuss in a little bit as a way to prevent my skin from getting dehydrated in a hot shower. And I don't run my face under the hot shower. I just kind of use that leave on mask or the cleansing balm as a mask and it sort of warms up and melts into the skin. And then I'll rinse my face after I get out of the shower. It's just another way of using a balm like this that allows you to enjoy that skin contact and also prevents moisture loss. The last first cleanse product is the Paula's Choice Omega Complex Cleansing Balm. I've spoken up about this before. It's beautiful. I love that it comes in a tube. I would love for it to come in a flip cap to make its use even easier. Right now, the, the lid just comes off, but it's 
really, really effective. This is a fragrance-free, essential oil-free cleansing balm, so it's beautiful for sensitive skins. I would say it's sort of in the mid-range in terms of texture. It's neither thin and slippy nor thick and buttery like the Youth to the People one. This is just kind of right in the middle, a true kind of cloud-like cleansing balm and it melts in beautifully. It's very soft to touch. It has like a cushiony feel and it lifts up makeup and SPF, waterproof makeup, all of that rinses away clean. I really love the Omega range from Paula's Choice. I find that it's great for skin barrier strengthening. It's great for sensitive skin. It, in general, it helps um, support your moisture barrier overall, I find. So this is a beautiful choice, also easy to travel with because it comes in a tube. Moving into second cleanses, I have two categories. So there's gel cleansers and cream cleansers. Starting with gel, I have the Wildcat Patchouli and Cherimoya gel cleanser. So Wildcat is also a new brand to me in 2021. They are now carried in Ulta, which is great. Their products are at a very, very accessible price point. Um, this is such an interesting gel cleanser. It has a distinct patchouli scent. I think it includes patchouli, maybe essential oils or botanicals. So if you do like patchouli and that like earthiness, I think you'll like this. I'm kind of patchouli ambivalent, but what I love about this is the texture. It's a very bouncy texture. It's almost like a cushiony gel and it's like you'd think it would be sticky because it's so ooey gooey, but it's not sticky. It just has like a bit of body to it. It's not a watery gel. It kind of like holds together. And so as you're working it into the skin, it gives you a bit of an opportunity to work it into the skin and you feel that pillowy layer between your fingers and the skin. And it rinses clean. It does not strip the skin barrier. It does not leave you with tight skin. I think this is just a really cool texture overall. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I have the Youth to the People Superfood Cleanser, Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. Very long name. This is their giant size, their jumbo size. It's a glass bottle. It's refillable. I love that about it. You can see I've really worked my way through this bottle throughout the year. This is on the other end of gel cleanser the gel cleanser spectrum in that it's much more fluid it's much more lightweight and it's slightly slightly foaming not in the way that we think of like old school foaming cleansers that like strip the skin it doesn't do that but it does give me a very thorough cleanse because of that slightly foaming activity I especially appreciated this in the summer when I was outside a lot wearing a ton of SPF. I was swimming a lot this summer and reapplying SPF a lot. And because of that, I found that that slightly bubbly action was gave me a really thorough cleanse. I have heard people with dry skin say this is maybe a little bit too not moisturizing enough for them. But I think if you have normal to oily skin, it would be great. If you have oily skin, I think you would really, really love this. If you're drier of the two gel cleansers that I named, I think you would like the Wildcat one a little bit better if you're looking for a gel cleanser. Moving into cream cleansers, I have a cream cleanser that's really stolen my heart. This is the Jordan Samuel Skin Matinee Cream Cleanser. This was released earlier this year, I think maybe in late spring, and I really loved it then, but I love it even more now that the weather is cooler, my skin is a little bit more dehydrated, and oftentimes, especially in the morning, I'm looking for something a little bit creamier, a little bit richer. So this is, it's a cream cleanser that I think would work for all skin types because there's the inclusion of zinc in here, I think. Actually, it is the inclusion of silt, which gives it this sort of gray color. And it's almost like a cream cleanser that works for everybody because it has a slightly jellier quality than maybe a straightforward, more lotion-y cream cleanser. It's not, it's not heavy on the skin. It, even though it's moisturizing, I don't find it to be like claggy on the skin. It doesn't drag and it doesn't 
feel like I'm just rubbing moisturizer on my skin, which sometimes the thickest of cream cleansers can do that. This has such a unique texture that even at, even in the summer when I was oily, I still reached for this because it was moisturizing and hydrating without clogging my pores. And I, I loved that. I also love all of Jordan Samuel's um, cleansers. I love the matinee cleanser. I love the after show cleanser. I love the matinee gel cleanser. I love the after show treatment cleanser. Those are both beautiful, but this is the newest one that's sort of found its way into my rotation. The second cream cleanser is slightly more straightforward. This is the Stratia Velvet Cleansing Milk, and it is much more of a classic cream cleanser in that it comes out as a white cream, and it's slightly, not lotion-y, but definitely creamy, and it's very moisturizing on the skin, but it doesn't, again, feel like it leaves a film behind when I rinse it. I actually really like to use this in the shower, sort of the way that I mentioned earlier, where I like to leave it on my skin for a good amount of time, maybe while I'm washing my hair or washing my body, and then I come back and rinse this off, and I feel like it it just sort of plumps up my skin even as I'm cleansing, and it doesn't leave behind any heaviness. Stradia also has a great price point. I think this cleanser is under $20 from what I remember, and it's a great size. It's four ounces. I love that it comes with a pump. It's just the kind of cleanser that I think everyone would love, but especially drier to normal combo skins. Next up, in the morning, I go in with vitamin C, and I really only have one. It's the Paula's Choice C15 Super Booster. It remains a favorite year after year. I've gone through many, many bottles of this. I've worked with Paula's Choice, but even before I worked with them, this was something I purchased many times on my own. This is a 15% L-ascorbic acid, which is kind of the most potent form of vitamin C, and it contains vitamin E and ferulic acid to help support the vitamin C in it. I find this to be really brightening. It's a watery texture that sinks in quickly. I don't get any irritation from this even though it's L-ascorbic acid. Some people do, um, but I find this to be really non-irritating. I also think that for the price point, it gives me really, really great results. This is around the f under $50 price point. Um, which is about half the price of much more expensive vitamin C's like the OG SkinCeuticals, which is also amazing. But I find this to give similar results um, without the really, really high price point. So it's just something that I come back to year after year. I did try a few other vitamin C's. I tried a few derivatives like the Youth to the People vitamin C serum. I did really like that but I didn't notice as much fading of dark spots and brightening, discoloration, all of that. It was more hydrating. This one I actually notice active fading of sunspots, dark spots, acne scars, all of that. Then I'm actually going to move into eye products. The first eye product that I have is the Fractionated Eye Contour Concentrate from Niod. This is something that I have, again, purchased year after year after year. I think I've been using this since maybe 2017. And if you struggle with puffiness, this will be your friend. For me, that's my main struggle. I don't really have um, dark under eyes. I don't have sunken eyes as much. For me, my main eye problem is puffiness. Like I wake up with puffiness um, if I have allergies, which I do frequently, or if I've eaten too much sodium. That's just my, my tell for when I've had a rough night. And for me, this just takes one drop. I drop it between my ring fingers, I tap it, around my under eyes and even on my eyelids. And I find that it helps me look much more awake. It almost like flattens and like irons out my under eye area. It flattens that puffiness and it takes it down. This is um, slightly oily, but more watery than oil. And so it sinks in almost instantly. It's not something that lingers. Um, I do like to top it with an eye cream, but I use this morning and night, and I can always tell when I don't have it in my routine because I have um, a double eyelid fold, but it's hooded, and when I'm not using it, my eyes look much more hooded, whereas when I am using it, the eyelid crease 
this is an Asian thing, but the eyelid crease goes higher. And so my eyes look more open and more awake, like right here. It's a subtle thing, but it's the kind of thing that I notice. And I find it does make a difference in the way that I look as well as my makeup application, all of that. So it's something that I continue to come back to. And I always have this in my routine. I also have a couple of eye creams that all sort of do different things. So this is the Kate Somerville Kate Suticles Lifting Eye Cream. Again, I raved about this all year. It is a lotion-y eye cream that actually seemed to depuff and had a lifting effect, I think, because of the depuffing. It doesn't have active ingredients in here from what I remember, but it just paired with the eye serum, the fractionated eye contour concentrate especially, it just gave my eyes, yeah, a lifted appearance, a f like flattened, depuffed, more awake appearance. And I loved this. I just emptied this actually. I was very, very sad about it. It is very expensive. It's $120. So I would wait for a sale to grab this again, but it is beautiful. It's something that I'm going to remember and pick up when I see a sale. The replacement for the Kate Somerville Lifting Eye Cream has been the SkinCeuticals AGE Eye Complex. So this claims to be a potent skin remedy to diminish the look of dark circles, puffiness, and visible effects caused by glycation. I don't know what glycation is, but I can say that I love the texture of this. It's almost like a whipped balm. You can see in the jar, it seems like it's going to be quite stiff, but then the second you melt it in between your fingers, it does melt a little bit and it has like a fluffy <laughs> feeling and it spreads out on the eyes really beautifully. It's really creamy. I haven't been using it long enough to say whether the results are anti-aging or something like that. I don't think it contains retinoids or anything like that, but I have noticed that the results that I had with the Kate Somerville's lifting eye cream are being maintained. So I do think this is depuffing, it is moisturizing, it's hydrating, and it's softening the skin around the eyes. The last eye product I have is the Indeed Labs Retinol Reface Eye Cream. They released, I think, the Retinol Reface line earlier this year. And this is a really nice eye cream with retinol. So I do like to have a dedicated eye cream with retinol, even though I use retinoids in my routine quite regularly. Because the skin around the eye area is a little bit thinner, it can be more sensitive. Some people don't tolerate other retinoids around the eye area very well so I do think in that case it's nice to have a dedicated retinoid eye product I have never noticed any like retinization around the eyes with this I've never had any adverse reactions no redness no irritation no peeling none of the potential side effects that people fear when it comes to retinol I've not noticed that at all to me this just feels like a rich eye cream it just has the perk of including retinol and of course um, indeed labs they're a Canadian brand. They always have a great price point. Everything in their line, I think, is under $30. So this is $25, which I think for a retinol eye cream is really great. It comes in a tube with a little pump, which I love. It's very lightweight, easy to use, easy to disperse the exact amount you need. The last product in the eye care category is the Do Skin Forever Eye Mask. So I reviewed these on Instagram. I'll link that post below. But these are silicone reusable eye patches. So let me show you. They come in their own little case in their little house. And these are very thin, reusable, medical grade silicone. And on their own, they're not meant to be used on their own. They don't moisturize on their own like inherently but what they do is they seal in any eye cream or eye gel or eye serum whatever you're going to use underneath and they prevent that from being from evaporating essentially right away so the silicone will seal in your eye cream and and maintain the moisture between your skin and the patch and essentially it allows that product to sink in a little bit deeper because it prevents it from evaporating off your face immediately. It's obviously not a must have, but it's a thing that's nice to have. I find myself in the mornings, if I'm working from home or I have a little bit more time or it's the weekend, as I'm doing my morning routine, I, 
I have this, I keep this tin right next to my eye products and I find myself being like, oh, I have a little extra time, I can pop these right on. And um, these are washable, so you just wash them with soap and water, you pat them dry and you put them back in the case. And I really love this concept. They are obviously a little bit more expensive than your typical eye gel eye patches that are disposable, but these are reusable many, many, many times in a row. I think dozens and dozens, depending on how well you take care of them. So I think these paired with your eye cream, your eye serum, whatever, um, it's just a way of elevating your routine and also making sure that you reap all of the benefits of your eye products by preventing them from evaporating off your face. So moving into hydrators, and this includes mists, essences, um, hydrating toners, just all products in the hydration, watery hydration category. I had one mist that I wanted to show you. I can't find it right now, but it's the Dr. Jart Sycopare Mist. And I really love the Sycopare line. It's designed with sensitive skins in mind, but the mist component on that is so, so fine. It's almost like you don't even feel it really. In a really like lightweight, like the finest mist you could imagine. I loved that for a hydrating step between skincare. I even loved it on top of makeup to take away any powderiness. I, I mean, I loved the formula, but I loved the mist component maybe even more. So I found that to be really refreshing without leaving water droplets and like, just leaving you drenched the way that some mists can. I actually don't have a hydrating toner to share with you, surprisingly, but I do have three different essences. So, you know, essence, toner, it can be a quite interchangeable category. There are three different textures and weights among these essences. So I'll start with the most watery one, which actually to me, feels almost closer to a hydrating toner. So first up is the I'm From Mugwort Essence. Now I'm From is a K-beauty brand and this is such a beautiful product. So within their range, they have a few different ingredient ranges. This is from the Mugwort range and if you're not familiar with Mugwort, it is known to be extremely soothing and hydrating and calming, especially for sensitive skin, inflamed skin, skin where you have a lot of redness underneath, which sometimes I do if it's irritated. And I found this to be just deliciously hydrating. It gave me a really shiny, bouncy, glass skin kind of look, but it sinks in quickly and I did find it to be cooling on the skin. I mean, I think any toner essence is like kind of cooling on the skin because it's essentially a liquid that you're splashing on your face, so that's cooling. But I did find it to have like that extra step of soothing the skin, especially um, if I was using retinoids, maybe I used retinoids the night before, if in the morning I came in with this as an extra hydrating step um, to kind of plump up the skin and give it that extra juiciness, um, just my skin really loved this. I've gone through maybe three bottles of this. This is a new one I haven't opened yet, even though I'm dying to because I love it so much, but I like it so much that I have another one kind of waiting in the wings to open. The next product is actually a toner. I thought it was an essence, but it's a toner. It's also from I'm From. This is the rice toner. Um, this is empty. I just emptied it a couple of days ago, but I think you can see here, it's this milky kind of color and that comes from the rice in here. This has 77.78 rice water. I should say that the mugwort is actually 100% mugwort essence. So I'm from has very high concentrations of the ingredients around which they center their lines. So rice is known to be calming and brightening especially and sort of skin tone evening. Traditionally rice water has been used in Asian cultures for washing the face, washing the hair, etc. So I did find this to be calming. I found it to be soothing. I guess compared to the mugwort essence, it's a little bit more watery, whereas the mugwort essence has a little bit more slip. It's slightly, slightly, slightly thicker than water. This texture is a little bit closer to water, but I use these interchangeably in my routine, just as a hydrating step to plump up the skin. I also often use these really generously. I'll do two or three skins of it, like two or three layers, 
and that just really packs in the hydration. Even though I have combo oily skin, sometimes it's oily because it's dehydrated, and so I really like to pack in the hydration. The last hydrating essence is, again, by Make. So this is a newer product in my routine, but it's so beautiful that I had to mention it. So this is the Micro Ferment Rice Essence Skin Prep Hydrating Liquid. This is a much thicker and bouncier texture than any of the I'm From products. It's more bouncy and gel-like. It's closer to being like a gel-like bounce than it is to being a watery essence. So actually, I was waiting to try this after I emptied the rice toner because they're both rice-based products, but actually they're very, very different. This is quite watery, whereas the microferment rice essence is much more bouncy. It's gel-like. It absorbs into the skin quickly, but not as quickly as a watery texture. It has that bit of like slip and glidiness. I really am enjoying this so far, especially in the colder seasons when my skin can use that extra bit of dewiness and bounce, and I find that this is a really pleasant textural experience. So the next category is actives, which is a very large umbrella category for chemical exfoliants, for spot treatments, for pigment targeting products, and for retinoids. So there are four subcategories starting with chemical exfoliant. The first is my longtime love. It's the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. For me, this is just something that I always have in my stash, especially in the summer when I'm oily. I use this all the time when I was much more acne prone than I am now, and it really helped clear out my pores and prevent blackheads and help treat breakouts. Now, this sort of has a different use in my routine, which is to maintain clear pores, um, prevent breakouts, especially in the summer when my skin is feeling extra clogged, extra oily. There's a lot of, you know, just residue and sweat and oil and grime on the face. I'm spending more time outside. This really helps prevent those little breakouts. I also find that this is a really critical step for me in controlling oiliness. So I was not using this in the beginning part of summer and I found myself getting really, really oily. And so I reintroduced this into my routine and it definitely helped um, for me maintain more balance overall in my skin. Even though this is a 2% BHA and it is, it does target oiliness, it never dries out my skin. It has, it almost has a slightly like oily feel, not in an unpleasant way, but in a way that prevents this from drying out the skin completely or making your skin feel really tight the way that I think acne treatments of, you know, the 90s and early 2000s did. This doesn't do that. It targets everything that I've mentioned without drying out the skin. The next product is from Saatchi Skin. This is the Complexion Clarifying Accelerator. Before I get into this, this, a bit of background on Saatchi Skin. It is a small brand that was founded by my beautiful friend Farah on Instagram. I'll link the brand as well as her handle below. Farah has been a skincare enthusiast and lover for many years, and she spent many years incubating this brand, formulating it, perfecting it, and I love the brand identity. So essentially, it's traditional Ayurvedic ingredients meets like you know, science forward, ingredient forward driven formulas. I love that the brand honors cultural tradition and long time ingredients and the history behind those ingredients, as well as the cutting edge kind of acids and ingredient names that we think of when we think of like cosmeceutical skincare. This brand really encompasses both and sees them not as opposing, but actually um, working in harmony with each other. And in doing that, Farah has created really beautiful, like super effective formulas. And so the Complexion Clarifying Accelerator contains 12.5% dioic and mandelic complex, organic neem, centella asiatica, manuka honey, and UMF 20 plus. I don't know what UMF 20 plus is, but I can say that this is really beautiful at like clearing out the pores, maintaining a clear complexion, and because it is, it's like very potent, but it has the manuka honey and the centella asiatica that still um, 
helps you maintain the health of your skin barrier. So it is potent, but it counters the intensity of the ingredients through really barrier supporting ingredients like the honey and the Centella Asiatica. This, like all of the products in the Saatchi skin line, which is a very small line, they've been very thoughtful about their curations, is a very complex formula. So the price point is high, but to me, this accomplishes what many steps of skincare can do in terms of treating acne, clearing complexion, um, addressing pigmentation even, while still hydrating and supporting the skin barrier. Moving into spot treatments, I only have one, which is the Peter Thomas Roth AHA BHA Acne Clearing Gel. This is a 10% glycolic acid and 2% salicylic, and together that formula is very potent. I actually only use this as a spot treatment, and this is the travel size version. It does come in a full size bottle, which is very very large and if you use it as a spot treatment it'll take you forever to go through even this one I've had for a very long time and I'm now just now getting down to the bottom of the bottle but I find this to be really effective on on the surface breakouts as well as even cystic breakouts like on the jawline I get those and I think because there's that combination of glycolic and salicylic it's working at multiple levels of the skin to treat breakouts and acne and for that reason, it's more potent. I sometimes can feel a bit of stinging. Sometimes it can dry out the skin if I leave it, if I like use it too much, but it's extra effective. So I feel like that's what you need and look for in a spot treatment. For a pigmentation targeting product, I have another product from Saatchi Skin. This is the Trifala Pigmentation Corrector, which contains, or it's called a multi-reparative peptide and brightening concentrate. Um, I actually don't know what's in here. There's a combination of potent ingredients. Um, it comes in a little glass bottle with a tube or with a pump, and this has helped fade pigmentation like nothing else I've used. It's very potent. This was actually the first formula that Saatchi Skin came out with. It's what they launched with, and to me, it remains like a star of the brand. It helps me with post-breakout acne uh, pigmentation, um, post acne pigmentation, like both the red and the brown uh, spots that are left behind, and also sunspots. I got a lot of sun this summer, and I've noticed that I have fewer sunspots than I expected, considering how much I was in the sun. I was playing tennis, I was swimming almost every day, and I expected more sun damage than I got, even though I was using SPF and all of that, just my skin type, I was expecting more. And I didn't really get that. I mean, I still have the normal amount of, you know, freckles and stuff like that. Um, but even on like post breakout marks, this has really helped cut down the time it takes for um, a post acne spot to heal for me, which oftentimes is like up to six months. Um, I've noticed that those post breakout spots have faded much more quickly within a matter of like one to two months with regular use. Moving into the last actives category, which is retinoids, I have the MVP, which is prescription strength tretinoin. This is tretinoin 0.05%, which um, I think is a medium strength tretinoin. Um, I know that some people start with 0.00 or 0.025%. So this has been amazing. I mean, I started prescription strength tretinoin in the beginning of this year. I think I started incorporating it maybe once a week or maybe once every like 10 days. And then I slowly, slowly, slowly brought it up to now every two or three days, depending on what I'm into, what how my skin feels, if I remember to use it. Um, I will say I did notice um, I didn't have any like peeling or retinization or irritation. For me, when I am amping up a retinoid, I feel a little bit more heat in the skin. So I did feel that and slightly more redness, like just because of the activity. And so I took it really slow. I think I, I only worked up to two to three times a week or two, sorry, every two to three days, maybe in like... April or May. So it, it was a very, very slow process. 
I have been using retinoids for many, many years. I think five, six years at this point. So my skin was used to retinols. Um, retinols are like the lowest strength. Then you have retinals, A-L, and then you have prescription strength tretinoin. So I had been working my way up the ladder for many years, which is why I didn't get any like super intense, like peeling, like all of that. Um, but I think the rule with any retinoid is a don't be afraid and just go low and slow and work your way up in strength and concentration and frequency of use and you should be okay if your skin can tolerate it but overall what i have noticed with the use of prescription strength tretinoin over my other retinoids which i will mention is that my skin is just much hardier um retinoids have the effect in my understanding of making your skin thicker essentially so it stimulates collagen it helps with anti-aging it helps fade pigmentation it also helps me a lot with breakouts i do not break out nearly as much as i used to even hormonal breakouts um and in terms of like skin firmness and elasticity all of that i'm very happy with where my skin is at 31. obviously i'm not having like major signs of aging yet but I feel good about like the track that I'm on with my skin. My two biggest things that I notice with tretinoin, other than like the long-term effects of anti-aging, are that my skin is stronger, hardier, um, it does feel thicker and less sensitive, and it also has completely like almost eradicated my breakouts, even cystic and hormonal breakouts. For non-prescription retinoids, I have two, and they are both retinals, which is one step below uh, tretinoin, and it's the strongest form of retinoid you can get over the counter. So first up is a long, long, long time favorite. It's the Medicaid Crystal Retinol. This is the Crystal Retinol 1, which is the lowest strength, but this year um, I was using Crystal Retinol 6. This was sent to me, so it's a brand new tube. I already used up my, I've used Retinol, Crystal Retinol 3 and Crystal Retinol 6, um, but I am really happy to have this in my stash. Crystal Retinol is just a beautiful line. It's like one of the star products from Medicaid because it's so beautifully formulated. It's a lightweight lotion consistency and I never have had any irritation with it. It was what I used when I stepped up from Retinol, O-L, to Retinol, A-L, and I was really scared of that step of retinizing, potential irritation, all of that, and I never, felt any of that with any of the Medicaid crystal retinols that I've used of any strength. They do go up to crystal retinol 10 and I think there's even a 20. So there are stronger strengths in this line than what I've tried, but they are all beautiful and just, I cannot recommend them enough if you are interested in dipping your toe into the world of retinol. The last retinoid is also from Saatchi Skin. So this is their Ursolic Acid and Retinol Overnight Reform, which contains Bacuchiol, Glutathione, Organic Black Cumin, and Holy Basil. So this is a beautiful retinol. It's also, um, I've never had irritation, but I do can I can tell it's potent. Like it really does the job of I feel like keeping breakouts at bay, keeping my skin clear. Um, obviously, the anti-aging properties of retinol, and this is more of a gel formula. Um, I love all of the packaging. They come in airless pumps, um, so you don't waste any product. You know that your product is staying fresh, and. Um, I think this is just a really beautifully formulated product. Again, like the rest of the Saatchi Skin line, it's a very complex formula in that it's not just the retinol. There's the Bacuchiol, there's these botanicals, there's traditional Ayurvedic ingredients. And so I actually noticed a lot of skin brightening with this too. Um, I don't know if that's one of the claims, I guess it says it targets all signs of aging, sun damage, congestion, and hyperpigmentation. So I did feel that kind of multi-targeted effect using this product. Because I'm using prescription strength tretinoin, sometimes like if I'm using, let's say, if I have three retinol nights, I'll do tret and a retinol like this, and then tret again. 
just because I like to flirt with different products. But obviously you don't need all of these. Um, any of these on their own is beautiful and sufficient to fill that void in your routine. Moving into serums, I have quite a few, but they're all very different. So the first one is the Victoria Beckham and Augustine Spotter Cell Rejuvenating Power Serum. This is beautiful. It's hydrating. It's like a fluid gel consistency. It's this amber color. And I find that it lends the skin a beautiful glow, a beautiful um, plumpness and like a softness. It absorbs quickly, but it doesn't leave any tackiness on the skin. It's not um, sticky at all. I don't think this has active ingredients in it. It really is just a hydrator and like skin prep product. It is very expensive, but it's a nice way to get a taste of a guest in this water if that line is a little bit too expensive for you. This is still very, very luxury, but slightly less expensive than Augustine Spotter. And I love this for in the morning under makeup. I don't know whether this is just my bias because this is a luxury product, but I do feel like when I use this, um, even though it's hydrating, my pores look softer and my skin in general, it's almost like there's a little bit of a hydrated veil that goes over it. Obviously, it's not like a makeup product. It's not gonna filter your skin. It's not gonna do anything like that, but I do really like it for makeup prep for that reason. The second serum is one I don't have with me, but I've discussed in previous videos. It's the Coco Kind Ceramide Barrier Supporting Serum. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's one of the more affordable products in my favorites. I think it's $20 for, it's like a beautiful, bouncy, slightly milky serum. And ceramides are kind of like the building blocks for your skin barrier. You need them, they're, I think they're fatty acids, I'm not sure, but they help support the overall strength and plumpness and fortitude of your skin. So especially when you're using actives or retinoids, it's nice to have products with ceramides because it helps support the strength and health of your skin overall. Then I have the SkinCeuticals Phytocorrective Gel the complexion calming gel. I have not had this in my routine for a couple of years. Um, a few years ago, I emptied maybe one or two bottles of this and I really loved it. It's a very interesting product. It's obviously this bright green color. It has this gel-like texture. You really only need a drop or two of this. And it does contain botanicals. Um, it's meant to soothe, hydrate, and calm your skin. I feel like especially if you have redness in your skin or sensitivity, this does help that redness subside overall, especially in the winter. And I'm finding like if I've been out in the wind or you're a little bit wind chapped on the face, something like this is really nice for subsiding that potential irritation. And I'm just so happy I have it back in my routine. Lastly, I have the Make Lactonics Synchronizing Skin Serum. So this is um, definitely the thickest in texture of the serums. It's actually almost kind of like a lightweight lotion. Comes in this uh, glass bottle and it comes with a pump and it has, uh, yeah, a, like a light lotion-y feel, but it is very spreadable. It sinks in really quickly. So this contains um, a bit of lactic acid. I think there's also maybe a vitamin C derivative in here. Um, some very, very gentle, like brightening ingredients. I actually thought this was going to be a lot more active than it was before I opened it. Upon opening it, I've now realized it's, it's really just like a moisturizing, hydrating step in my skincare routine. I rely on other things for brightening, for exfoliation. It contains such low um, concentrations of those active ingredients that I don't worry if I do use it in a routine with other actives. What I do love about this is that it's very skin softening. It has almost like a velvety feel as it sets down. And in the summer, I could use this like as my moisturizer step because it has that milky creaminess. 
And in the winter, it's a really nice fortifying step under a thicker moisturizer um, in the day as well as in the evening. It's actually very similar in texture to the next two products I'm going to discuss, which are emulsions. The first one is the La Mer Hydrating Infused Emulsion. It's very bougie, I'm aware. Um, they sent this to me and I couldn't believe that I got La Mer PR. I still can't believe it. It is so beautiful. So an emulsion is essentially a blend of oil and water. It's blended together so it does not separate, but you can think of it as like a liquefied cream. It has the moisture and the emollients that a cream does, um, that the oils in the cream give it, but it still has the fluidity of um, like the more hydrating products. So this is the texture of the emulsion. Again, it's milky, it's creamy, it's very silky. This one's actually a bit more watery than the Make Beauty um, serum that I showed you. That one actually sets to a slightly more velvety finish. This one stays a little bit more emollient. For me, it's definitely an evening product when my skin is feeling dry and I need a little bit of extra moisture. I need something to kind of cocoon it before I go to bed. It's just beautiful. I mean, I have not tried a lot from La Mer. I've tried the Creme de La Mer, which is also stunning, and I've tried this. So um, I've only tried two products, but Obviously, at the luxury price point, you're not only paying for formula and efficacy, you're also paying for the experience, for the elevated textures and the scents, and it does have like a powdery botanical smell, um, but it also delivers, I have to say, on the skin softening and moisturizing. The last emulsion, um, they actually call this a moisturizer, I think. This is the U Beauty, the Smart Super Hy the Super Smart Hydrator. This is beautiful. It's also like a milky texture. It's um, essentially like a liquid cream. So you can see it has that milkiness, but this actually is uh, thicker in texture than the La Mer. It has, um, a bit more like grip to it. The La Mer is a little bit more fluid. This has slightly more grip, I think. I mean, it does say it's a moisturizer, but I put it in this category because it does have a bit of fluidity. I love this as a moisturizing step on its own, but I especially love this as um, an additional step under a thicker, richer cream at night. And I've been loving it in the winter time when my skin is feeling parched. I need that extra step, as I've been saying, and this really delivers. I think um, also, if you have oily skin, you can just use it as your moisturizer. And if you have dry skin, you can use it as a moisturizing step. So I think a lot of different skin types would really like this. Um, and I find, the texture and the formula to be pretty unique overall. Moving into moisturizers, I have gel moisturizers and cream moisturizers. So the gel moisturizer that I've loved is the Make Beauty Succulent Skin Gel Cream. I mean, the name is so good, Succulent Skin Gel Cream, and I love the packaging. It's a silver tube with a pump, and I feel like the packaging really embodies that like futuristic, sci-fi vibe of Make Beauty. But um, packaging aside, the formula is stunning. It's a really lightweight gel and it looks like this. It's super lightweight, it's ultra hydrating, and that's what I love. Some gel creams are lightweight and they sink in, but they don't give you long enough, long lasting hydration. And even oily skin needs hydration throughout the day. This actually leaves my skin plumped up and hydrated, but not greasy, and it, that hydration I do feel like lasts throughout the day. Similarly, the Youth to the People Air Whip Moisture Cream, I don't have it in front of me, but it's a gel cream in a jar, and I've spoken about it before. That one also does the same thing of delivering hydrated, plumped up skin, and keeping your skin hydrated throughout the day without getting heavy or greasy. And both the Make Beauty one and the Youth to the People one were indispensable to me in the summertime when my skin could not handle heavier moisturizers. For more traditional cream moisturizers, I have the Holy Frog Grand Amino Cushion Cream. I loved this so much. Um, I emptied one, and this is my next one. 
This is a lightweight lotion, but it still gave me moisture and um, really supported my skin barrier throughout the day as well as throughout the night. So I have used this um, during my daytime routines under makeup and it's beautiful that way. And when I do that, I only really need like a pump. And then if I use it in the evening, I'll take maybe two or three pumps and it's a little bit richer. But I feel like it's very adjustable in terms of the kind of richness you can get from it. This is very much a barrier supporting moisturizer. So it contains lots of peptides, which is great for anti-aging. It contains ceramides, it contains moisturizing ingredients. And so I felt like this was a great cream to use to support my skin when I was especially using active routines. So I felt like this was a great cream to have in the lineup, both for anti-aging and also to support my skin barrier when I'm using other active products. My other moisturizer love is again from Victoria Beckham Beauty. <laughs> Um, it is the Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. It comes in this beautiful bottle. It's a pump bottle. Um, if you're going to get one skincare item from Victoria Beckham Beauty, I think it should be the Priming Moisturizer. This is such a good texture. It's creamy, but kind of cushiony. And it also, um, I don't know, it has this quality where it seems to like melt into the skin. And when I use it, I do feel like, even though I don't think there, there are silicones in here, it gives me a really nice veil across the skin. And it, it sinks in quickly, but it, it really gives me moisture. I can use it during the day, but I can also use it in the evening, like as a richer cream if I apply more of it. I have this in both the original as well as the golden version, which has like a golden glowy tint to it. I love them both, but I definitely use the original more because I use it as a skincare step, whereas the golden version, I kind of use it as more of a makeup priming step. For oils, there was only one oil that really took the cake for me this year, and that was the Mila Clarity Oil. This is a new bottle. I have one that's currently open. So Mila is owned by a couple um, who founded the brand, and they run a small farm in Alabama. So this oil actually uses botanical oils that are cold pressed, harvested and cold pressed from their farm and it's so beautiful. It's actually an oil that is formulated with oily and breakout prone skin in mind. And I realize that sounds counterintuitive, but there are actually ingredients in here that do help prevent skin healing during and after a breakout and can also help prevent breakouts by fortifying the skin barrier, actually helping to control oil. It's just a really stunning product and I can never get over the packaging of this oil. So it says Mila here, has this beautiful glass bottle, gold cap, and this floral gold embossing. This oil is a blend of many different oils, including cucumber seed oil, hemp seed oil, metafoam seed oil, milk thistle seed oil, nettle, sunflower seed oil. There are a bunch of different botanical oils in here, but it is a really sort of lightweight, oil that sinks into the skin. And I can't say that about every oil that I've tried. I'm actually quite picky with facial oils as someone with oily and combo skin, but this, knowing that it's formulated with my skin type in mind, um, I've just really fallen head over heels for it. And I also love the brand Ethos. I love that it's small batch. I love that they harvest the ingredients themselves on the farm and, um, I feel very connected to the brand story. And I was really excited because after trying the product, I, I've had the opportunity to work with them pretty closely on some content here and there. And I just really adore the brand and um, I adore the founders. So it's been a really, a discovery that's been close to my heart this year. So let's talk about masks. I have leave-on like night masks as well as wash-off masks. The one mask that really comes to mind as the star, one of the like top five products of the year for me actually, is the Chantecaille Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask. So this is a white cream. 
it looks like this. It has this like jello-y, not jello-y, but almost like this bouncy cream texture. And you can use it as a wash off mask or a leave on mask. I use it as a night mask because I want, first of all, it's expensive, it's $98 but I also want the ingredients on my skin as long as possible. But here's what this mask does that I've never seen any other mask do, is it calms my complexion and it gives me the most like even skin ever. Like my pigmentation, any redness, any blood vessels, like popped blood vessels or redness close to the surface, it's all super, super calmed when I wake up the next morning. It does leave a white residue, so um, when you wash your face the next morning, you'll see the white residue or like that milkiness come off your skin, and then you look in the mirror and it's like clear complexion. It's so weird, I don't know how they do it. Um, I don't know how it works, but it is like softening, it's soothing, my skin looks really just like pillowy <laughs> after I use it and it's also hydrating so I just I don't know what it is but this is a standout product I also have a backup waiting in the wings because it's become one of those things that I'm like I can't not have it it's a great thing to use like before a special event because it just guarantees that I'm gonna wake up with great skin there are two night masks that I've been using. The first is the Wildcat Starflower and Snow Mushroom Ultra Hydrating Sleep Mask. This is a beautiful texture. It reminds me of like whipped marshmallow, like marshmallow fluff, but it's not sticky. It is very rich and um, kind of balmy, and so you work it into the skin, but it is a great um, occlusive emollient layer before bedtime. I find that it really locks in all of the hydrating layers that I like to use underneath it, and I wake up with really plumped up pillowy skin. Recently, I've been using the Make Beauty Hibernation Capsule Overnight Recovery Balm. This is their latest launch. Um, this is great because, well, first of all, the packaging is refillable. So you can buy the jar and then the, the actual cream pod is refillable. This is such an interesting product because I was expecting something very emollient, almost even oily because of the word balm, but this actually dries down to like a matte finish. I feel like it's actually the perfect night mask for normal to even oily skins. If you have oily skin and you struggle to find moisturizing products that don't, um, that aren't too oily, this is that. It's not greasy, it just sort of melts into the skin and gives you like a satiny skin sort of feel. I have heard um, people with drier skin say they would like it to be like, more emollient, maybe even a little bit oilier, in which case you could obviously add a drop of oil to it. But I just want to mention that because I think the texture and the finish is quite unique for a night mask. And then I have one wash off mask, which is the I'm From Honey Mask. My skin loves all things honey. I find it to be really moisturizing and healing and soothing. This actually looks and sort of feels and um, smells strongly of honey. I think this is, it's 38.7% honey. Ugh, it smells so good. Every time I use it, I want like a honey, like honey ice cream or something like that. It's a beautiful texture and I love this mask because it does not dry down. So it's not one of those masks that you apply and then 10 minutes later it's like caked onto the skin. It actually stays moist the whole time you use it. And so you can use it, leave it on for up to an hour. Honestly, I think you could use it even longer than that. Um, I probably have because I often like to use this before I get in the bath. So I'll apply this and then I'll soak in the bath for a while, I'll read a book, and then I wash it off at the end of the bath and my skin is left really, really soft and moisturized. Um, it's just a really lovely experience. For SPFs, 
all of my favorite SPFs are Asian SPFs. So there are three that are all slightly different. The one I'm using right now is by Isntree. It's the watery hyaluronic acid watery sun gel with eight types of hyaluronic acid. It's SPF 50 plus PA four pluses. This is beautiful. It's like a cream texture. It's ultra hydrating. Um, in the summer, I can use this as my moisturizer because it is so hydrating, but it's not oily. It sinks in quickly. These are all, all of the SPFs I'm mentioning are chemical filters. They use um, advanced chemical filters, a blend of filters to give you great sun protection. And they're all lightweight and they they leave no white cast because they're all chemical filters. So that's kind of a baseline for me for my skin type as well as for my skin tone. The next one is one I've emptied just recently. This is the Nivea Sun Super Water Gel. And I should say all of the SPFs I'm going to mention I've gone through multiple tubes and bottles of. I love this because it comes with a pump. It is a gel cream, so it has that slightly translucent quality to it and it um, it's a bit runny. I love this in the summer, I love this in the winter. This has a bit of alcohol in it, so it does give you that kind of dry down feeling. So dry skins may find this not moisturizing enough. If you're dry, if you have dry skin, I think you should go for the Isntree, which has no alcohol. But um, I do love this too. It's SPF 50 PA 3 pluses. Now these two I don't think are water resistant. For a water resistant option this summer, I use the Skin Aqua SPF 50 PA 4 pluses. And that's water resistant, I think up to 80 or 90 minutes. And I don't have a bottle of that with me right now, but I will insert a picture of it. So this one was amazing. I went through so many bottles of it. It also comes in a pump bottle um, because as I mentioned, I spent a lot of time in the pool this summer. I was swimming for exercise and I loved that as a really strong layer before I got in the pool, when I would get out of the pool and having the pump bottle just encouraged me to use it really generously. And I did find that it was super water resistant. Like. I would go, I would come home from the pool and I would go to use my oil cleanser and it wasn't until I used the cleanser that I could feel it sort of breaking up the SPF. That one has a milky white texture, but it doesn't leave a white cast. It's all chemical as well. For lip care, I have two products. I mean, there were a lot of lip products that I loved, longtime favorites, but two uh, new kind of products that entered my rotation. So the first is the Roto Mentholatum SPF Lip Balm. It's called the Melty Lip Cream SPF 25, PA maybe three pluses. So this comes in a variety of scents. There was like a vanilla one, a honey one, and I recently picked up the matcha green tea one. I can't find it anywhere, so I'll insert a picture. But I love this because it was a really moisturizing lip balm with high SPF. Honestly, it's really hard to find higher than SPF 30 in lip products, so SPF 25 is pretty good in my book. Even though it was a lip SPF product, it never tasted or smelled of sunscreen. In fact, I liked it so much that I used it, I kept it by my desk, I kept it in my purse, just as a regular lip balm. And I have been trying to be more conscious about sun protection on my lips. I think it's a part of our bodies that's often overlooked. We think about SPF for the face and body, and then we forget our lips. So that was a great find for me. There were many other lip balms that remained longtime favorites, like the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I love that. But the newest uh, lip skincare for lips product is the Make Beauty Serum Balm. I think if I had to pick one product from Make Beauty, I wouldn't want to, but it would be this. So it is a very lightweight uh, serum balm. It's like a liquefied balm, but it's almost like a gel texture. It's really cushiony. It's not sticky at all, and it's really lightweight. These are lightly, lightly tinted. So this is the shade Halo Moon. There's also one I love called Sun Flare or Solar Flare. And that one's slightly coral, there's a pink, there's a nude. So there's a variety of shades, but they're so lightly tinted that you almost don't really see the shade at all. For me, this is definitely skincare for the lips in that 
I use this when I'm in need of a lip balm, but it's a more elevated experience than a lip balm in a tube, like a twist up tube or a pot that you stick your finger in. This has a chubby doe foot applicator, which I love. It just like really hugs and like, I don't know, it like coats the lips so beautifully because of how large the surface area is. And I have one of these in my purse. I have one next to my sink. I have one next to my desk. It's just a beautiful, beautiful product. And it's a really unique texture that does moisturize your lips over time, but it's it's not heavy at all. To wrap this up, I have two skincare devices that came into rotation this year that I actually use. There are others that I've loved in the past, but these are new to me in 2021. So the first is the New Face. I've spoken about this in my skincare, Sephora skincare video, my Derm Store skincare video. So the New Face is a microcurrent device that aids in a lifting appearance. And I, I think there are other like long-term effects as well. But what I've noticed the most is that it does help sort of lift and tighten along the cheekbone or above the brow, along the jawline. And you do see a difference as long as you use it consistently. So this is one of those devices that um, it, has, it has a real effect and a visible effect, but you have to be consistent in using it. I don't have any of the other attachments, but there are other attachments that you can get to target, for example, your eye area or your lip area if there are certain zones of the face that you really wanna target. So I think if you are, you don't, you definitely don't need it in your 20s, I would say 30s minimum plus, um, the new face has been really nice. The second device has been the Current Body LED Mask. Now you know I've used and loved the Dr. Dennis Gross LED mask for a long time, the Spectralite one, and I love that too. It has a red and blue light setting. This one is only red light, which is um, for anti-aging. It helps stimulate collagen. It also helps fade sunspots and dark spots and pigmentation. It helps, I think, take down inflammation in the skin. And overall, my skin looks brighter, glowier, healthier. It, it feels and behaves in a more healthy way when I use LED treatments. So I really, really stand by them. The current body one, there's pros and cons to the Dr. Dennis Grossen current body ones that I won't go into now. If you are curious, maybe I'll do a dedicated video. But the current body one is a soft shell silicone mask. So you can see it's bendy. And so it, it definitely fits my face better. The Dr. Dennis Gross one is a hard shell, and so I definitely find, because I have high cheekbones, my cheekbones sometimes feel a little bit squeezed into the mask. This one you can just like wear, and um, you can also use it on your decollete, you can use it on other parts of your body. The current body mask does have a longer cycle, like a light cycle, than the Dr. Dren Dennis Gross one. That one is only two to three minutes. This one is much longer. I wanna say like 10 to 15 minutes, I can't remember exactly, but um, because it's so comfortable and you can wear it around, like you can do things and be totally hands-free while you're using it. So you basically use it by turning it on with this little button and you can just tuck the battery pack into a pocket or something while you're walking around doing things. It also comes with an eye protectors and it comes with a strap in the back. I've actually added an additional strap across the top of the head for extra security. Um, it was really easy to do and the straps were just like a couple of bucks. I find myself using the Dr. Dennis Gross mask if I am breaking out or if I feel a breakout coming. I do find the blue light to be very effective for preventing breakouts from coming to the surface. But if I want real red light treatment and like anti-aging and soothing inflammation and all of that stuff, I have tended to use the current body one more because it does fit my face a little bit better. So those are the two devices that have been new to me in 2021 and both have been hits. 
So that's everything from me. I know this was probably a very long video. I've been sitting here for hours and my voice is hoarse, but I hope you found something in here that maybe sparks your interest. I would love to know what your skincare favorites of 2021 were. If there's anything you think I must try in 2022, let me know in the comments. And if you're not subscribed, I'd obviously love for you to subscribe and hang out with me on the reg. So I will see you in my next video. Bye.